the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. Scouts, check. Nerves, check. Rolling the game, check, check, check. One of the most historic amateur baseball tournaments globally is here, yet not in its usual spot, but it's still in Florida. Great competition in 2020. Can be hard to find, but not here. Bat Association World Championship National Scouting Director Jared Goodwin. He's here for a big time reason. My name is Darren Sutton. Great features throughout this day two show, but we have to have the brains behind the scene that help us understand what we've been seeing. I've got a list of names. You're going to tell me why we're talking about it. And uh, let's start with the fresh one. Mason Marriott, Christian Little. These are two pitchers, right? Two pitchers, two right-handed pitchers. Uh, Marriott committed to Baylor. Um, Christian Little going to uh, going to probably go to Vandy early, so this is kind of a last hurrah for his friends. It was right here on a, a Terry Park Stadium, and it was a fantastic game. Uh, very spirited um, from, from both teams' side. Um, didn't get out of hand, but definitely wanted to, uh, wanted to win this one as, in a key matchup of pool play. Marriott was just spectacular. He sat around 90, ran up to 93, actually his last pitch of the game, like the 86th pitch of the game or so, was a 93 mile an hour fastball for a strikeout. So held it the, other time, uh, the whole time. Curveball, slider, both. A uh, lot of run ride on the fastball he, and just held his velocity and he was fantastic. Struck out nine, nine hitters over seven innings and, and really little went toe to toe with him. He threw four innings and they were, they were great. Uh, as well, um, excuse me, five innings and great as well. He was up to 92, sat around 90 though as well. Now he can really manipulate the fastball and sink it. Uh, so he'll, he'll dip down into, you know, the 86, 88 range, but he's a famous kid, you know, a festival kid, an all-American kid, uh, and he was as advertised. The breaking ball continues to get better, and he, he's always had a very good changeup. So uh, it, it was, for us scouts, it was just fun to see two guys go at it, especially knowing that this is their last event, and they, they truly just wanted to win a game. And so it was just great to see. We actually were talking about how much we enjoyed it, uh, really as spectators, as much as we were scouting. All right, rapid fire, maybe 15 Let's seconds on each. Here we go, and a bunch of PG All-Americans in a row. Malachi Knight. Malachi Knight came in as one of the best defensive players in the country. Uh, question was the bat, he has proved it. He's hit multiple doubles this weekend and just keeps taking great at-bats uh, the whole time for the Canes. Alex Mooney. Alex Mooney has hit balls over people's heads so far this week, and he's versatile. Um, defensively, he can play all over the infield and probably center field. Camden Hayslip. Camden Hayslip hit a majestic home run yesterday. He is a big physical left-handed hitter, uh, got in one and, and elevated over the right center field wall and it was gone from the start. Uh, the, the sky's the limit as far as his powers. powers big concerned. Brady House. Big Brady House uh, had some questions coming in. It was an up and down summer. He was even frustrated as we talk. He has rung the bell. Three doubles so far, 108 exit velo for a hit this last game, a big back pick in a huge spot. Uh, you can just tell he's enjoying being with his team and trying to win games. Final name of this one, not an All-American, but a guy who's playing like one now, Roman Kimball, Notre Dame commit. Notre Dame commit, uh, smart. Uh, he, was, he was low 90s all day yesterday with a big breaking ball. Lots of swing and miss uh, from Kimball yesterday. He's really, uh, he's really been a riser so far. I anticipate him getting to Notre Dame with such a good degree. But man, he was special to watch. That two pitch mix that he showed yesterday uh, was just special. Not everybody can be scouted. Some have to scout themselves. And one of the best hitters in all of the country is Tommy White. And he teaches us a little bit how he does what he does. The PG All-American teaching hitter. I, uh, I use a lot of different bats. If I get a couple hits with it, if the ball comes hard off the bat, it's, it becomes my friend real quick. So I clean it up, get this going, a little action just to make it my home, and I dig my back foot in, make it comfortable, and then I play on my front foot, get ready, and I just sit here like this. And as soon as he comes, I'm loaded, back knob, point at the catcher, just a little bit, front foot up, and as soon as I'm about to swing, drop, bring that knee forward, and I'm right through the motion. Usually two-hand finish, and end with one at the end, just 
try to get two hands as long as I can possible. My favorite hitting drill to get ready to hit is uh, definitely a tee work and um, a lot of front toss, uh, working in the opposite field, uh, just getting my swing right to get ready for the game. The most important body part for me to work in the weight room is uh, definitely my legs and my hips uh, to get them fired through because it's all from the legs and hips for uh, swinging. Uh, I've learned to handle velocity better by uh, just getting my foot down and just um, reading the pitch out of the hand and uh, just not being late, just getting early before I'm late. I like David Ortiz, uh, just one of his uh, big things. He just so much power and just how he just attacks every baseball and he has no cheap swings. He, he's attacking every single baseball to kill it. And um, Miguel Cabrera as well, um, just how he uh, hits opposite field home runs, like it's easy, just how he just has so much power to opposite field and just is not scared to work that way. Probably the most fun hit, like it was like a home run I had, it was, it was the farthest ball I probably ever hit in my life. Um, it was a, a changeup inside and then there was a high school game. And I, um, I took it like way over the batter's eye. It was probably, probably went about 460, 470. I mean, that ball still going. It was just a moonshot too and just walked it off. Gave a little peep to the dugout because uh, there was a lot of smack talk going on that game, but uh, it was just the moment. So I want to get to a couple of guys again. We'll, we'll rapid fire your names, but your perspective is so welcome. Irv Carter, Aiden Hunter, they faced one another? They faced one another yesterday uh, in an early matchup. Both rung the bell. Uh, Carter tired a little bit in the fourth. This, this Fort Myers heat got to him, but he was a steady uh, 92 for the most part, up to 95. The slider still played. He's uh, such an emotional, uh, competitive kid. He's always fun to watch. And Aiden Hunter coming in, um, no, and he's a South Carolina commit. He's a good player, but man, he was spectacular. Four, uh, four innings, he faced a minimum 12 batters, ran his fastball up to 90, threw a really sharp slider, flashed the changeup. He's six foot four, loose, long limbed. Uh, there's, there's big time projection and left in him, and he's, he's been up to 93 and just, just kind of outpitched the All American. And that's not, a, that's not that Irv didn't throw well because he threw uh, a spectacular game too. The big redhead, Shane Panzini. Shane Panzini, my. my uh, uh, my good friend Brian Sikowski got that game as you guys did a did a special on him after. Uh, he was 90-95 with two above average pitches, not a ton of projection left, but that doesn't matter. He's going to still tick up. He's pretty polished, big hip turn with some deception and a, and a fast arm, and he knows what he's trying to do. So when you can you can sit there and you have three above average pitches, that's pretty enticing, you know, for for any big league club at this point. Cooper Dawson's famous because he threw 100 and went internet crazy at the Junior National Showcase. Right. He's here. And, and was on the mound, okay? And he, and he was 89, 92, uh, ran it up to 93 with, with heavy sink on the ball. He's got a sharp downer breaking ball. Um, that was probably the, the best polish I've seen from him. He really dotted the glove side with, with two pitches. He's so athletic. He's a great center fielder, but you can tell he's done some work on the mound. He's, he wasn't just a thrower yesterday. He really came and pitched and uh, threw three innings and struck out six, so plenty of swing and miss. The big thing with him that we haven't seen before, no walks. That was nice. big. Outstanding. David Horn, Marcelo Meyer. Teammates, uh, Horn's a two-way player, but really start on the on the mound. It was just a two-inning outing, but but sat in the 89-92 range again. A, a hard slider, about 81, especially for a 2022. Uh, we kind of knock on that word again, that that polish word. Um, Two-pitch mix, tunneling ability, even even as a young kid, and he's a big, durable guy. But the arm stroke and the athleticism still gives him a, quite a bit of upside. Marcelo Mayer was just spectacular. I mean, he the fluidity that he does things. He made a play past the bag at second base, threw from underneath, accurate to the bag, an, enough velo, and then in the last at bat, turns on a pitch, hits a double down the right field line, 104 off the bat. If he lifts it, it's a 400-foot home run, and he was just he, just spectacular, especially with all eyes on him. San Diego show. Grayson Carter, final name of this block. Grayson Carter came on for Trotsky, and his first two innings were, were just lights out. He was up to uh, 96 himself. Um, the off speed has really gotten better. The slider's really coming along, but it's the ease that he does it in. Um, he's a big kid, basketball player, very good basketball player, actually, so uh, has those kind of athletic actions that he, that he you know, 
that he, that he always shows up on the mound. Um, and the big thing with him is kind of holding that. He was one with the quarantine that we didn't see a ton. So for him to come here, compete, and, and do so well early on, uh, that's big for him to kind of jump back on the scene. Over the years, he was talking about a guy by the name Robert Moore at this event. This is an early enrollee at Arkansas. His dad, Dayton Moore, is the general manager of the Kansas City Royals. He recently spent a bunch of time with us on PerfectGame.tv. We share with you his deep and sage advice for parents. I think what I've learned, and in a lot of cases, I've learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing our children really want to hear us say is, I love watching you play. Great job. Nice try. I love watching you play. I love watching you do something you love to do. And so when I started taking more of that approach, what I found out was my son began to ask me questions instead of me trying to give him answers before he asked. And so we began to develop this, this relationship um, you know, centered around the game where he would ask the questions. And then when I was coaching him or, or throwing batting practice to him, I would ask him, I said, do you want me to be dad or do you want me to be coach? Sometimes he'd say, be coach, give me what you have, and I would. If he said, be dad, I wouldn't say anything. I would just continue to throw batting practice, hit ground balls. I would encourage him uh, the entire time. Nice job, great job, get the next one. Love watching you play. Hey son, you know what? This was fun for me today. I hope this was fun. This was so much fun for me today to be able to come out and throw you batting practice and hit you ground balls. It's so much fun for me to take part in something that you love to do. Son, I just want to be a character in your story. This isn't my story. My days are over as a player. This is you. I just want to be a character. In it. Baseball, softball, sports is simply a platform and an opportunity to mold and shape our sons and daughters as leaders. The lessons you learn in one baseball game, the lessons you learn in one season or an entire career, those lessons applied appropriately will prepare you for almost every aspect of life. Be a great teammate. If you can be a great teammate, you got a chance to be a great husband and a great father. If you can put others first and genuinely celebrate the accomplishments of others, you got a chance to be a great son, a great brother, grow up to be a great husband, and grow up to be a great father. Manage failure. Like, and so when you think about this, and I was thinking about this the other day as it pertains to Alex Gordon, who just finished a 14-year career. His career was full of ups and downs, a lot of challenges mentally. Many a night, he stared at the ceiling before he went to bed. He was man trying to manage failure the entire time. The only way he was able to do that is he had people in his life that were encouraging, believing in him. And so as moms and dads and brothers and sisters and coaches, we've got to be the greatest cheerleaders our sons and daughters have ever had. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. And maybe the coach doesn't have you in the lineup every day because you're just not good enough yet. That's okay. Keep working hard. Keep staying committed. Keep giving your best. Because at the end of the day, your effort is the most important aspect of this. It's your effort. It's not necessarily the result. Let's not be so results oriented. Let's just focus on the process. The game of baseball, the game of softball is a process and it's chipping away, shaping you and molding you, pouring those lessons of life into you that's gonna help you become a CEO of a company, help you become a great member of your family and a great member of your community. Let's go with Brock Porter. You take it. Might, be, might have been the loudest outing so far of the tournament. Uh, he was up to 95 point something at 8 a.m. in the morning. He's got a, what we call a Bugs Bunny changeup, matching arm action, matching release, and 
it, it just has brakes. I call it brakes because halfway to the plate, it just throws the brakes on. Um, he, he faced a, a really good lineup with some of the top ranked guys in the country in 21 and 22. And at 8 a.m. when he had that velocity and that command, there was just no chance. He was spectacular this morning. Malcolm Moore. Malcolm Moore is a, is a bit of a pop-up name. Uh, I think it would have been a household name had he had the spring in California to play but really had a good area codes actually, and now is, now is in Jupiter against older kids, and had a single up the middle on a, on, a, on a pitch that was really well located, then worked in that bat later and just smoked a ball down the line for a double. He is polished, and the power potential in that left-handed swing is immense. Roman, this is our second Roman, by the this way. This is our show. second Roman. Roman Anthony. Roman Anthony had two, uh, two ABs this morning that, that were just great. Turned on one, another 100 plus exit velo out of these, and. and it just tells you these young kids, these are 2022. 20, they have come here and they're not scared. They're not intimidated. They are going toe to toe uh, with, with a guy that was low 90s this morning. It was a 92 mile an hour fastball and he turned on it like it was, you know, batting practice. Uh, athletic, rangy, uh, he, he's really had a good showing in the first couple days. Brad Rudis. Brad Rudis, I, I actually saw the first time uh, last summer at the 16U World Series, and he was spectacular at 80-84, and I said, man, if this guy's 88 to 90, he is going to be great. Well, he was 88 this morning with run, ride, uh, slider, change up. He moves it to all four quadrants. He is, he is uh, as advanced as I've seen at this age, and Texas A&M commit, he is gonna go in there and pitch from day one. He was great this morning. I pulled him away from an Ohio Warhawks game. Zion Rose, 13 and 14 U Select Festival athlete out of Chicago. Another big city guy, Joshua Baez, he's out of Boston. Born in the Dominican Republic, brand new English speaker, you'll be blown away by this. We took all the adults out of the mix. That's when the great conversations happen. Here they are. Joshua, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, so, I wanted to know, since you know 2020 coronavirus messed up a lot of uh, you know baseball, high school seasons and stuff, so yeah. have you taken, how has your approach been during the coronavirus? Well, it's been a lot different, you know. Coming into this year, I wanted to just ball out, you know, like with my team and, right. you know, COVID took that away from us. So right. it was mostly just training, you know, like right. when it was quarantined. We was out for two to three months. It was just working on the little things. That way, when summer hit, you know, I was ready to face live pitching. You say you train a lot, right? So I wanted to know what type of training you do. Yeah, so for example, like, you know, like this is like my last tournament. So after this, I'm li basically just going to be lifting six times a week. All right. Um, eating a lot, trying to gain pounds, just trying to get to, like, where I want to be at, you know. You know, like in order to play good on the field, you have to be ready, you know, like with your muscles, like they have to be ready to play um, six months a year. So right. just a lot of training, just trying to get your body right, right. Uh, a lot of eating, just working on the little stuff. That way when you get that pitch, you don't miss it, you know, right. a lot of teamwork. Right. And just doing like the little things, you know, like people take that for granted, you know, they try right. to do too much when it's really simple, you know, just see ball, hit ball, and that's just how I take it. Yeah. Yeah, so how is like your workout routine? Because I can see that you work out, right, you know, you, right. you look good and that's right. why you play good. So how is it, you know, like, you know, it's like lifting like a big thing for you? And oh yeah, training? yeah, for sure. So like during Corona, right, you know, I couldn't do nothing, couldn't go to gyms and stuff. So me and my dad actually invested like about 8,000 into making like a gym in our uh, garage. And so we got everything, uh, squat machines, dumbbells and yeah we've been doing that i got a cage uh, in my backyard just go back there and hit with a ball machine hit off of that get my eye coordination down uh That's like sick. i said seven days a week so basically you have everything at your house yeah all you yep. need yep and right That's down the street got a baseball field go right down there do all my field in uh so when you get up to the plate what's your approach and what's your favorite pitch to hit Favorite pitch to hit would be the fastball, obviously. Right. Middle end, I love fastballs, middle end. Um, but I can always hit the breaking balls because that's all they come, you know. They pitch me backwards. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm kind of used to that. So, I'm used to using the whole field. Right. So, for me, it's right away attack the pitcher before he attacks you. So, that's just my mindset to be aggressive of the play and just drive the ball anywhere he throws it in the play. Gotcha. Uh, how is it for you, you know, you as a young hitter? Right. You're a sophomore, so how is it for you? You're coming out here facing these top like arms. Like you said, fastballs. You know, the velo's harder now, of course. So I just feel like if you get good contact, 
75% swing. Ball's gonna jump off the bat, but early in the counts, I like looking at fastballs, spit on all curve balls. You know, once you get the two strikes, you gotta at least foul it off, get that. And like you said, when that curveball comes, of course you're ready. I'm Zion Rose from Chicago, Illinois. I'm Josh Byers from Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. And, and thank you, man. Together. Appreciate yeah. it. Good, good, good luck today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Insightful inside the locker room, insightful outside the locker room. Catcher and pitcher, Josh Randall. One more basket of names for you, Devin Futrell and Alex Uloa. Uh, Futrell is uh, a really projectable lefty, six foot five, kind of just how you draw him up. Um, used to get outs at 83, 84, 85. Now he's up to 89, 90. The arm's working. He's still got projection left even when he gets to college if that's the route he takes at Vanderbilt. But three pitches this morning, he really pounds the zone, gets swing and miss. And as the velocity bumps, uh, obviously those strikeout numbers have really climbed. Uloa. Uloa was great this morning. He hit a ball 100 plus off the bat to the right center gap. He had two hits, but the ball he drove to the to the gap seemed to just backspin and carry. I mean, straight to the wall. Um, and, and he has a different motor. He plays shortstop, high energy, um, almost reckless at times, and, and not in a bad way. Guy, you've got to rein in, and, and the future is bright for this one because this kid can really hit. Tristan Smith. Tristan Smith's arm speed is uh, potentially the best in the 2022 class. Um, Left-handed pitcher, big kid, but his arm speed's almost hard to control sometimes. He was 91-94 with a hard breaking ball. Maybe, I, I mean, you could put him in as that top group of just arm talent in the entire class, and he rang the bell this morning with three uh, shutout innings. Tyler Dean pitched against Arian Rodriguez. What happened? Uh, Tyler Dean has been up to 97 in the past. He pitched at 91-93 today maybe grabbed a little more, but he, he really commanded the glove side of the strike zone, which we haven't seen. Um, the slider was good, the fastball had angle. It was probably the best that we've seen him from a pitchability standpoint. And if he can do that, and then he starts to gain that 97 back, this is a real helium guy going into next spring. Yeah, the one team that he's seen a lot that we enjoy seeing is a team that produced a man who's still active in the postseason, Clayton Kershaw, it's the Dallas Tigers. 
So we went and took our cup of coffee and went and found them, and we found so many amazing stories. There's a young man in Luke Hefner who hit his way into the Perfect Game All-American Classic. His dad, the head coach of a major college program, he explains, as does his teammate on the Dallas Tigers, who is Canadian, who is talented, who is a former child actor, voice actor. Do you remember the show Paw Patrol? Here we go, both stories. I mean, the beginning of the summer started with working out in my barn, as you said, with all my younger brothers. Um, we built a cage in our backyard, and so we were just grinding at the beginning of the summer. So I think that hard work over quarantine really paid off. And then that kind of kick-started the summer into playing. And then, I mean, it was just, we rolled. I mean, we just kept playing and playing because having that long of a break, you, you really wanted to play. All-American Classic came a couple weeks ago. Uh, played that, that was probably one of the best events I've ever been to, it was a lot of fun. Played a couple of JUCO teams in the fall and then now we're here. I knew it wasn't gonna get at bats, um, so you had to get them somehow. So I would just visualize every night. Just go through three or four at bats, different pitchers, lefty, righty, um, thumber, real high spin fastball. I just like closed my eyes and pictured those guys in my head so that I would be ready when game time came. At National, I don't, I mean, nobody really knew me at all. And I knew this was gonna be for the Perfect Game All-American, so I just, I wanted to, just wanted to show out. So I thought, everybody's gonna have a good fastball, so if I can just be on time to the fastball, I'll be fine. And then I was able to get a couple hits, and that was, that was really awesome. The perks of being a coach's kid are definitely the facility, probably. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome getting to go to DBU and after school, hitting the cages, hit off the machines, take ground balls with the guys, too. I mean, it's really awesome. I mean, you, you learn a lot from the college guys just watching them. Challenges of being a coach's kid are people expecting a lot of you, for me personally, because um, my dad's super successful and it kind of puts pressure on me that I need to do well. Kind of have to get over it and just put your head down and, and play. With the Jays, uh, that was actually the reason why I started playing baseball. I went to my first game when I was two years old, and I remember my parents telling me, uh, like every once in a while on the way home, I wouldn't stop talking about it. It's it just, that's really what started baseball for me. I kept going. I loved the Jays. I watched them every night as much as I could. And then back in 2015, when I had that playoff run, I was going crazy. Everyone in my household was super excited, and you know, you know the Jays were my favorite team. You know, we play our hearts out. We grind if we really want it. Uh, it's, it's huge down there. I mean, obviously, it's not as huge as it is here, maybe. But like, it depends on where you go, it depends on who you ask. There's a lot of talent on the junior national team, of course. So, you know, it's huge. Some of the best players that are Canadian are guys who work hard. So for example, Josh Naylor, Noah Naylor, you know, Desan Brown, Owen Casey, David Calabrese, all those guys, they all play on the junior national team. And it shows like why they're on there. They're all, uh, Desan, Noah, and Josh, they're all in the bigs right now, right? So those are the best players in Canada. Being with the junior national team, I've seen pitches that are pitches that have like you know nasty curveballs up to 97, you know. So it's nothing really new. It's stuff that I can handle, and you know it's just it's just the game I've been playing every day, right? So it's nothing to get nervous about or get over anxious about. It's just another day, another game. Just doing my thing. It's what's going to help me. Tell me a little bit about your acting career, as if I hadn't read anything about it. Tell me a little bit about when it started and how it went for you. Uh, it started at a young age, you know, I was a really shy kid when I was younger, so my mom got me into it along with my sisters, and so that really helped me bring out the character I am today. Uh, you know, getting different auditions, trying to be this character or this character, whether I had to be sad or excited, you know, it really brought out more characters in me. So uh, that eventually led to Paw Patrol, which was the biggest thing for me. Everyone everyone knew about it. It was like, it was, it was, it was for sure a big part of my life. You know, my teachers would ask me about it. They'd be like, where are you going every Wednesday? Shooting a TV show and they'd go crazy. 
My teacher actually pulled me out of class one time, just told me, hey, come here really quick. Hey, I got a, my sister's son likes the show. Can you do a little skit for me? Like just say this line and send him a message, wish him happy birthday, you know, that kind of stuff. I did that at least seven times, if I'm being honest. Just a bunch of times said, hey, Paw Patrol's on a roll, that kind of stuff, right? The pickup line. As soon as I was done, that ended. Like I, I didn't give it another shot. Ryder was much younger. The voice was all the way up here. Now I'm back down here. I'm right down here. <laughs>So day two here in Fort Myers, Florida in the books and so many amazing stories. We loved seeing all of them. Don't forget you can follow each and every game on perfectgame.org. Find the scoring app, find Diamond Cast when you follow into the scoreboard. You can watch every single game that will be streamed and we'll do our best to have a game of the day right here on perfectgame.tv. Wall to wall coverage of the greatest amateur baseball tournament globally, no doubt about it. Until next time, thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Darren Sutton.